Good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. We're for agriculture, for growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. We're for agri- Running the sanctuary absolutely brings me peace. The work is 100% cathartic for me. You know, I find myself getting tied up in it and being busy, and then it's really nice just to sit, breathe in life, and it's beyond zen. It's beyond zen. Good morning. Quarterfinals here in Swift Currents. We got three rocks down the ice. Looking like Team Silvernagle with Hammer. like my scoreboard not working. There we go. There we go. Not that we've missed much. Standard open end. Bit of a rollout, so it looked like we had a draw attempt. Or did they mean to throw that guard? I'd be happy if they did. I love it when the team takes a wide open end with nothing going on and tempts some offense. Let's pretend that's what happened. Let's 
Silvernagle with the brick. Jade Bloor throwing third stones for Tisdale. Jade and I forever entwined with a Whitewood Farmer and Friends bond spiel victory. Walked home with a fancy new TV and some great memories. Whitewood Farmer and Friends bond spiel. Fantastic event. Whitewood Curling Club and Hockey Arena. Chad and the squad in Whitewood put on a fantastic event. Just beware of the Vatterstad happy hour. Doubles for the price of singles. Danger. All right, rocking the rings. Corner guard along the right wing. If someone can make a roll, might get a force or a, a deuce opportunity here in the first. That would be rare for this tournament. Most teams have been playing an open first end almost by default. So as a commentator, gotta love it when they're mixing things up in the first end. She will spill out of the rings. Bit of trouble. That means Team Silvernagle can make use of this corner guard. We're going to have some action. <laughs> Ashley Howard trying to put one in the rings. Get by the guard. Just waiting for it to slow down a little bit. Nice sweep. Perfect draw, as we can see from the straightaway angle. Totally buried. Although I think there might be a tap back opportunity. Maybe you could remove that with hack weight. And that's what they're going to set up. Pretty tight to the guard. That call that was always a bit of a risk was crashing that guard. Oh, and look at this spin. Oh, that's kind of lucky. Not going to make a huge impact. That's probably the area of the ice that uh, Team Silver Nagel was going to draw to anyway, but it's got to be a hit instead of a draw now. Makes it a little tougher, I guess. I guess that's the beauty of throwing board weight. Or that down weight that, that Team Tisdale threw. Hey, 
Kelly Schaefer throwing last rocks for Team Silver Nagel this weekend. Ashley Howard filling in at third. This is way outside. Gonna chip that Tisdale Stone over. But not out. But not out. Opportunity to set up a force. Probably want to get this more or less on the nose, maybe a little roll inside. Don't want to leave a double blank opportunity. I, I guess you'd want to roll a little broom side there, keep these lined up, force the, the double to be made along the nose so shooter doesn't roll out, get a force out of it. But either way, goal is to lie too. Makes the hit, rolls a little far, but I think that's just fine. It will be a hit for one. Got this a little outside, hoping it curls up. And it does. Successful single point. Team Silvernagel takes one in the first end. Forced to one, we should say, in the first end. It'll be Tisdale with Hammer in the second. We come back. S3 Delta ATV size Harris are for landowners, arena operators, groundskeepers, contractors, and everyone in between. Our maintenance free Harrows are made of rugged materials which allow work to be done, not done on them. Our Harrows are used for maintaining corrals and indoor arenas. They can also level and smooth pastures, gravel paths, and driveways. They're wonderful for preparing seed beds for food plots. They can dethatch and aerate to allow moisture to get where moisture needs to be. Manure doesn't do any good in a pile, our Harrows help break it up and get it dispersed. Best of all, it's not a one-dimensional product as it can be used in three different ways. In an aggressive mode, a less aggressive mode, or even on its back in a smoothing mode. All accomplished with the simple placement of our drawbar. Made in America with American Steel in Shenandoah, Iowa. on the farm since day one, so you know, I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come, so. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that.
the epic music of the Nutrient Ag commercial. Gotta love it. Like you're in a movie theater. Great sponsors for this event. Got Nutrient, of course, everything in Swift Current. S3 Group, the title sponsor of this event. They've got some fantastic ads you'll see throughout the match, including an aeration device made by aliens, UFO aeration, but don't want to spoil it for you. First end, it was an open end, and then we saw a guard. Might have been a light draw, but we're going to say it was a guard. We're going to say Team Silvernagel wanted to get aggressive, mix it up a little bit. But ended up being a force. Two, tis two Tisdale stones in the rings. Made sure that Silvernagel scored one in the first. So now here we are, lead stones in the second. No guards to speak of once again. Not much to say when the teams keep hitting and hitting and rolling out and hitting and rolling out. You can see Brim being tapped high the rings. To the wings it goes. Will it stick around? It will. Rock sticks around on that left wing of the house as the shooter sees it. Tisdale happy to hit that stone on the wing. But doesn't do it. Or sorry, but uh, doesn't stick around on the wing. Rolls that to the middle, somewhat accidentally. Spreading out the sheet a little bit to know some new paths. I guess that's the, the development of this end.
sticks around this time, Jade Bloor. Okay, dozed off for a little bit there. Looks like we will have a blank attempt. People keeping their hits in the rings, so that's a good sign. Always good to, even in these nothing ends, just making sure that we're throwing, throwing well. I guess we don't know it's going to be a blank attempt yet. Kelly's got to make her last hit. Got a little... Ahead of myself there. The thrilling overhead of this hit. It's been hard to keep it straight. And that is the position of the blank attempt. We now know it's where it'll go down.
Ooh, sweeping this hard. Trying to keep it high side of nose. That looks nose all day. And all that for a stuck blank. It's a 1 1 tie. Let's see if someone makes a move in the third. It'll be Silvernagel's turn with Hammer when we come back. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Guard. Dun, 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 dun. The curling begins. We have a center ish guard. We have a draw ish behind the guard. Looks like Tisdale's team will chase it. Pokes it. Will it be a poke out of the rings? It will not. Rushes it to the other side of the house. Decently valuable position. Not a ton of ice we can see here. Gets it tucked in behind the guard. That's a nice shot. Kara Thevno, very consistent lead rock thrower. Has been for years. And we mix it up. Very interesting. It'll be a freeze. If this freeze is not made, it's going to be big trouble for Team Tisdale. Curl looks good. The sweepers don't want to touch it, though. Not going to bounce. Just going to clean miss. Uh, just about four feet heavy. 
line was perfect. That could have been a really useful shot had it curled just a little bit sooner or, or slowed up a little bit, but bit of a miss. Silver Nagel lies too. They will once again use this same outturn draw path. Kind of interesting. It means that they're leaving the intern freeze path open and available again. This is much tighter to the guard. In fact, they're gonna they're gonna let this one go. Really curled a lot. Or just very, very light. Very, very light is what I'm thinking. My my view is a lot choppier than your view on YouTube. I'm sacrificing resources to make sure that the output is hundred percent. This is what I sacrifice for my audience, people. So as a result, I have a lot of trouble seeing what the weight is, kind of choppy frames per second on my view, but bear with me. Intern draw path, still available and actually a, even more juicy, I would say. Once you get this buried, it, as long as you can get second shot, it's gonna be a pretty good rock. I'm trying to get this to curl a bit. Much more room than the first one. Trying to get that at least second shot. No, can't quite do it. Good controlling position at the front of the rings. That's that's a useful place. Is not really going to shrink the scoring circle any more than it already was, though. So even though that's available for promotion on the next shot, it's, it's still going to leave this outturn draw opportunity to lie three for Team Silvernagle. So Tisdale, not in huge trouble yet. They have options, but this is starting to look a little scary as Silvernagle plugs the rings with more and more stones. Really good line. Sweeper's trying to manage this. Little further for third shot. No, they don't quite get it. And I think that's it's quite buried to the point where it's not going to be an easy tap back. That's That thing's not going to go straight back. You're only ever going to get it sort of angular motion from it. So, bit of a miss. Two misses in a row. Useful stones nonetheless, but that's not what was called. And here's that tap that we knew was coming as soon as the first one missed a little light. There's the tap, waiting for it to curl. It's trying to come. What are they gonna get out of this? Pretty good angle. Curled just enough to send the yellow into the forefoot, makes contact, does have decent position, does have second shot. That's gotta be considered a success. Checking my YouTube stream, we got 69, 71 watching now. We just gained two viewers. Hello, two new viewers. My name is Rory McCusker, Curling Stadium operator, commentator, bringing you this game Sunday morning from Swift Current. Quarterfinal action. Team Silvernagle, skipped by Kelly Schaefer. Team Tisdale. Let's hit you with some lineups. Seems like a good, good time for that. Right now, we got throwing third stones for Silvernagel is Ashley Howard subbing in. Doesn't quite get that roll. Punches it right through the, the back of the rings. Wanted that a little thicker. Keep the shooter around. Bit of a missed opportunity because that was the only stone that was going to allow a roll into the forefoot button area. 
rounding out the lineup. Robin Silvernagel not here, so it's Kelly Schaefer skipping. And we got the regular front end, Kara Thevenot at lead, Shaylin Kitts at second. Team Tisdale knows they have second shot. They know that their rock is not going to be very easily removed. So they're thinking that they might just play it safe here, get rid of a, get rid of a silver nagel stone. They don't want to set up a double to remove their, their rock that's in good position at the top of the forefoot. And they think it's going to be pretty tough to make an effective draw that isn't going to leave a freeze opportunity for silver nagel. So they'll play it safe. She'll get rid of the obvious stone, the open stone. Jade Bluer throwing third stones. Hits and sticks. That's a decent shot. Jade and I, Whitewood, Farmer and Friends, Bonspiel champions. They'll never take it away from us, Jade. <laughs> Very fun event, that Whitewood Bonspiel. Want to play it next year? Too bad. There's a waiting list. Better get on it for 2026. One of the most exclusive events in the province of Saskatchewan. <laughs> Still got a few liquor tokens in my curling bag rattling around from last year. So you have to buy them in the dozens. That's the only way you get a discount. So 11 p.m. Saturday night. Yeah, I was tempted into the dozen deal. Who wouldn't be? As a result, I still got four or five tokens rattling around my bag because yes it is mimosa morning sunday at the farmer and friends whitewood bonds bill enough about whitewood and jade and i being champions forever back to the game Sweeper's working really hard on this one. Will they get it there for second shot? Oh, so close. Almost a really, really nice freeze. Open freeze. It's a difficult call, difficult make, but if you can get that rock in perfect positioning, the reward is great. However, yeah, as you can see by the signaling of, of the brooms from Team Tisdale here, there is a double opportunity. It's a thin one, and it does jam on the... Tisdale stone at the back of the forefoot, but I think if you make it the thin way that it needs to be made there, you avoid the jam or at least spill the red stones either way. Pretty big reward. Being nestled right into the forefoot behind cover, I, I think you got to go for it. Even if you hit it a little thick, roll over to the, the forefoot. As long as you get rid of that silver nagel stone, I think it's, it's going to turn out pretty good for you. Yana Tisdale, a very good hitter, throws the big weight, has a very uh, smooth, sturdy, big weight slide. You'll see around the rink. So very comfortable lining up this thin double. Let's get the, uh, get the full look here. Sweeper, sweepers Carla, A Carla Anaka and Chantal Martin. Could be Anaka. I've never heard it pronounced, so forgive me. But I really never apologize for mispronouncing player names. If I've never heard it before, how am I supposed to know? No apologies here. Send me a mean text and I'll figure it out. Double. Let's see how it shapes out. Gets one. Comes across. Bounces off their own. Does move the Silver Nagel Stone. That was pretty lucky any thicker and I think the the shooter would have kind of rolled open so even though they did not remove both red stones and even though they did move uh, their own stone they really weren't trying to move I think the shooter has ended up in such a good position it doesn't really matter might be a tap back to lie two you'd have to hit it just right I'm gonna call that a four out of five made shot with some Made shot with some uh, something to be desired. 
five point system. Of course, that was my old job, Grand Slam of Curling. Managing the stats, teaching stats volunteers how to consistently grade shots out of five. As you can imagine, pretty challenging job. Pretty challenging to create consistency across the board. And even harder to teach um, non-technology inclined seniors how to operate a mouse and web page at game speed. I would say that was the bigger challenge. So, Silvernagle, just debating their options here. Is it too late to shred those center guards? Might be. If you get those out of the way, though, you, you might have some run back or double opportunities to really make something happen here. I think as of right now, there is a uh, pretty natural double on the outturn side. Hit that yellow rock on the wing. Roll it into the forefoot. Collide with the Tisdale stone that was just thrown. I think you're lying two undercover if you make that happen. Another option is an intern tap. Might only be lying one. But, um, you know, you'd have uh, positioning at the front of the front of the forefoot. Of course, Tisdale could follow it up with a freeze, maybe force you that way. But I like the double call. We'll see what Kelly Schaefer likes to throw. Always fun when the game actually gets started. Got to throw a guard to, actually, to mix it up and make things happen. Those first two ends. Whew, snoozers. Want to welcome our numbers here. What do we got? We got 81 watching now. Our views are blowing up. That's what happens when you throw a guard. People start watching. Got Sue Gleason. Hi, Rory from Michigan. Sue is on a lot of our screen streams. Hi, Sue. Glad to have you with us. Hey, if you're watching on your computer or on your phone, there's a comment section on the YouTube stream. Go ahead and use it. I've had friends say, I don't want to comment. I don't want people to see my name. Well, come on now. Why are you, why are you here? Why are you uh, engaging in Saskatchewan tour curling if, if you think that you're not good enough to leave a comment? Come participate. Come chat with me in, in the YouTube chat. Gets one. Gets two. Just bumps it back a little bit. Another double that was made just a little too thick. Doesn't remove the second stone. Going to leave an opportunity for Tisdale. Not a lot of risk. It'd be pretty tough to leave a triple. Maybe if you hit it right on the nose, you'd leave some kind of triple to leave a shot for three. But as long as you hit this thing and roll to the other side of center line, I think that you can pretty safely assume that there's not going to be a shot for three. Sweeper's on this. Really trying to hold it straight. Gets the hit. Rolls just a little too far. Bounces off the top of the Silver Nagel Stone. It's going to be a hit for two. Not an easy hit for two. They're going to have to throw soft weight. And you know what? I think if that yellow jams directly back onto the other yellow, I don't think it's for two. So I think you have to get to the nose of this. I think you got to throw just easy weights, probably just a tap back, backline hack weight. Yeah, and that's what they're going to line up with the broom. So challenging shot for two, but a shot for two nonetheless. 
would have been a really good force if uh, if Tisdale was able to keep that stone sort of on the side of the forefoot. Could have even been a, a good steal opportunity if Tisdale was able to keep that stone sort of biting the center line. But just overrolls a little bit. You know, open the door. Kelly Schaefer. And a shot for two here in the third end. This is the last rock. I'll use my last rock button for the first time this game. A lot to do. A lot to take care of over here in the operating booth, which, of course, is my home office in Regina, Saskatchewan. A lot of curl. This rock has a lot of way to go. I don't even know if they're going to make contact. Yep, there it goes. A little more curl. Are they going to get enough? Not enough weight as well. So, it's a single point. No big deal. That's a fine result. Silver Nagel with another single. They had to work a little harder for this one than the first two ends. It's going to be Tisdale with the hammer in the fourth end when we return. Enjoy this... Uh, Enjoy this set of commercials. They're very special. We're for agriculture. For growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. Hi there, Jim Hale for S3 Air Systems. Today we're gonna to talk about their new product, UFO Aeration. Here you can see the completed durable powder coated steel frame construction and the large mega louver design that allows four times more airflow than traditional steel louver designs. Here I'm just bolting the uh, stage halves together. you can see how the components lock together with just a counterclockwise twist for different aeration needs where you can add and remove stages. Just remember that once there's grain in the bin, you can't change how many stages are in it. Please empty the bin before you change the number of stages. Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTAL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. You heard it here first, folks. UFO aeration. Aeration so good, you'd think aliens invented it. That dude, given the breakdown of the UFO aeration, bit of a jokester. Funny guy. And here we go, we're up to 100 viewers. Welcome everyone. Quarter final action on a Sunday morning. That's right, football has not started yet, so how are you gonna spend your morning? Doing chores, cleaning up, feeding the dog? Hell no, you're watching curling. Swift Current Saskatchewan, S3 Group, SAS Tour Series. Quarter final action, Team Silver Nagle, Team Tisdale. We've got another guard. Woohoo! Another exciting end, hopefully. Coming up. First draw, just a little bit deep in the back eight. Second draw, a little bit shallow, top 12. So, not a perfect end from the lead so far. I guess we've got one more lead rock left. Try and figure it out.
Looks like it'll be a hit. Bit of a dangerous call. Don't want to jam this. And they're on the curl sweep, hoping they don't jam. Ah, there's no jam. There's no worry. That's Tisdale, line two. One of them undercover with a tight center guard. Though, I think Silvernagle does have a double look here. Second rock thrower for Team Silvernagle. Shailen Kitts. Waiting for this thing to curl. Looks like they're just getting one across the top. And yep, there it is. Shooter will roll out of the way. And now second rock thrower for Team Tisdale. Chantel Martin will have a good opportunity to tuck one away. Chantel's sister Sherry watching was just chirping me over Snapchat. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry Martin, one of the funniest ladies to have a few drinks with upstairs. I got to get Sherry to an open mic night or something sometime soon. Sherry and Chantel have been traveling the world, making the rest of us on uh, who follow them on social media very jealous. Chantel said something interesting to me yesterday. She made a rip on the German public transportation system. Uh, Chantel, it's famously efficient and fantastic. I don't know how you didn't get it figured out, but I guess they did not teach reading a bus schedule in Ituna grade five uh, curriculum. So that makes sense. Couldn't figure out the German transportation system. What are you going to say next? Italian spaghetti sucked? Come on, Chantel. Makes a really nice draw there. Chantel was able to figure out that uh, that line path. Caught the 415 to the center line. Really good positioning for Team Tisdale down the middle. And it is going to be a center line run back. When you don't have hammer and you're bashing back your center line guard on second stones, you know things have went poorly so far. Short run back. Very makeable. Shaylin hates it already. And I can see why. Missed pretty outside on her first hit. Missed pretty inside on her second hit. Uncharacteristic of Shaylin. I was going to say a good hitter, but Shaylin's just a, a great overall player. One of Saskatchewan's best, in fact. So I would expect her to fix that up pretty quickly for next end. Or is she Saskatchewan's own anymore? Tough to say. Her and Braden living out in uh, Manitoba. I think. I don't know. T chime in on the chat. I'd like to hear stories. Where are people uh, watching from? We got Diane Bird just watching from Ottawa on a quiet Sunday morning. Yes, yes, I could imagine so. Thanks for joining, Diane. Thanks for... Uh, Thanks for chiming in. Sue reminding me that we met at uh, U.S. Nationals. That was a great stats team. Sue, one of the best. U.S. Nationals is a blast. Some of my favorite curling I've ever covered. Just the, uh, the American curling community is buzzing. So excited and so eager to learn, take new things on, master the craft. Official warning, Canadian curling fans. The States are into curling. It's only going to be up from here for American curling talent. You can already see it starting to build the depth. There's always been one or two good teams, right? But both on the men's and women's side, now there's, there's multiple viable competitive international women's teams. We've seen that with uh, Anderson team last few team last few years. Um, yeah, multiple, multiple talented curling uh, talents from from the states. Beware! Georgette Sparks watching from Sydney, Nova Scotia. Good morning. Or I guess it's it, getting pretty close to afternoon over there in Sydney. More of an open dew brewing now at this point. 
Guards are out of the way. Kind of stacked on that left wing, not really making much of an impact. I guess you could try to draw around them, but. Now the task for Team Tisdale will to be keep their stones as separated as possible. Double opportunity number one. Ashley Howard. Oh! Kara taking a bit of a tumble. Don't worry, Kara. There's no live instant replay on my machine. Viewers, of course, could rewind on the YouTube stream. Just saying. See how that went down? Not really sure how that happened. I might do the same thing myself. Just leaning a little too hard into that sweep. Just, you know, laying it all on the line. Trying to make sure that she's putting every square inch of pressure on the broom that she possibly can. Can't fault Kara for that. But it's a, it's an unfortunate mistake. It's going to mean three Tisdale Rocks will enter the rings, or the opportunity for three Tisdale Rocks to enter the rings. We'll try to keep these as separated as possible. That's a pretty good angle. I do not see any easy double on the ice right now. So work cut out for Kelly Schaefer here in this even fourth end. I think this is ice for a hit and roll, which is which is understandable. I don't think there's a very easy double. And even if there was a double to take on, it would involve rolling your shooter out of the rings. Would just give Tisdale another opportunity to spread things out. So I like the hit and roll. I think you're gonna tempt you have your best chance of tempting a miss. Unless, of course, I'm totally wrong and they are taking on this slash double. Nah, that looks like wait for a hit and roll. So, two foot roll to the left. Gets the hit, makes the roll. Beautiful shot. Leaves it right on top of the Tisdale stone. Going to make it challenging for Yana to keep this rock in the rings. Oh, thanks, Braden. Updating me. Manitobans, we are. That buffalo emoji is fire. That's fantastic. I don't know when they introduced that, but I am jealous. Jay still has the birthright. Yes, dual citizen. <laughs> hey, Larry from Glenella, Manitoba. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for commenting on the, the chat. 
this is what makes uh, live curling streams better than TS Center Sportsnet people is your ability to comment and interact with me. The players, you got to know, as the players go back to their hotel rooms, they're watching the stream. They're they're going back and re-watching shots and situations, kind of fixing mistakes, trying to uh, track patterns in the ice. So the curlers do read these chats. Really well-managed uh, angle for that hit and roll. I'm just wondering why Yana threw that much weight. I feel like she could have stuck around in the side of the rings if she threw a little less weight. But they managed that stone perfectly. They are able to save their, their two rocks in the rings. So it'll be two Tisdale stones in the rings. It just shows how, how nice that roll was by Kelly Schaefer earlier. Put it right on top of the stone, made it so challenging that, uh, that Tisdale needed to, to make sure she got rid of that silver angle stone. As a result, her shooter rolls out of the ring. So that's a, that's a success in that kind of two rock trade. Hit and roll followed by hit and roll out of the rings. Now it's going to give an opportunity to address another Tisdale stone in the rings. Wonder where she'll try to roll to this time. Not sure she's got a ton of room to roll Broom's side and try to kind of tuck it behind the other yellow. Might be satisfied with just leaving a, a hit for two. The way this end was going, I think that might be a totally acceptable result. Nice, easy weight. Able to manage this with sweeping quite easily. Looks like they are going for a bit of a roll. Broom side, just getting a little, little bit of one. It'll be a hit and stick for two. Well earned, nice end from Team Tisdale. Putting the rocks in good spots, answering the call when Silvernagel cleaned things up. Never really leaving an easy double. So, well fought, Team Tisdale. Last rock. Ooh, quick, let's get my last rock button. There it is. Yep, sweepers are on it. Looks good. They will guide it in. A little bit of a roll, but no problem. It's going to be a score of two. Team Tisdale. That's going to give Silvernagel the hammer in the fifth end. Trailing by one. we got a fun game brewing here. Back and forth. Both teams with a good opportunity to take take the lead. We will have the continuation of this game when we come back after a commercial break from our generous sponsors that make all of this streaming possible. S3 Delta ATV size Harris are for landowners, arena operators, groundskeepers, contractors, and everyone in between. Our maintenance-free harrows are made of rugged materials which allow work to be done, not done on them. Our harrows are used for maintaining corrals and indoor arenas. They can also level and smooth pastures, gravel paths, and driveways. They're wonderful for preparing seed beds for food plots. They can dethatch and aerate to allow moisture to get where moisture needs to be. Manure doesn't do any good in a pile. Our harrows help break it up and get it dispersed. Best of all, it's not a one-dimensional product as it can be used in three different ways. In an aggressive mode, 
a less aggressive mode, or even on its back in a smoother mode, all accomplished with the simple placement of our drawbar. Made in America with American Steel in Shenandoah, Iowa. I've been raised on the farm since day one, so you know, I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that. Welcome back, Fifth End. Just standing up so I can check the NFL London game. It's boring as per usual. There will never be a good game in London, I swear. Looking like a clean end, building up. I think we had our first rock was a guard and then there was a stone in the rings or am i mistaken how did this how did this happen we'll never know we were in commercial and i just admitted i was watching nfl so not sure how it happened but Three, three stones in the corner. Though we will get a corner guard from Team Silvernagle. Hoo -hoo. Who says blanking the fifth is a fantastic tactical decision? Klaus Clausen, watching from, okay, ready for this, Klaus? Quispamsis, Quispamsis, Quispamsis. All right, go to the chat, everyone, and try to pronounce that name. See if you can do better than me. New Brunswick, nice to have commentary. It was lonely talking to myself each shot. Well, you're welcome, Klaus. I talk to myself all day, every day doing these streams. I just have to pretend that it's fun and funny and someone likes it. So thanks for the shout out. The ice looks great. A shout out to the ice makers. The ice is great, Klaus. Uh, Swift Current has become, you know, if not the one of the premier curling facilities, not just in Saskatchewan, but in Western Canada. Getting some big names. The big names feed bigger tournaments. Bigger tournaments feed bigger sponsors. And then... Events like that keep more big events coming. After that, your local community starts to take notice. Hey, I got all these fantastic world-class curlers curling at the club down the street. Maybe I should go play some curling at that club. Your league registrations go up. The chain reaction I am describing right now is that one that a curling stadium uh, system is able to amplify in your facility. No, it's not going to do everything for you, but if you have a steady club kind of board managers ice maker if, if they're all firing at all pistons and, and you think it's time to amplify your club's presence in the world curling world in the world curling uh, community it's time to send an email to curling stadium jerry gertz john benton james gordon cameron rittenauer myself included we would love to work with you you should just you should Take a look at the new installs that we put in every off season. It seems to double 
and these clubs enjoy such focused attention and success. Success breeds success. So you are correct. It is good ice at the at the Swift Curling. It's great ice at the Swift Curling, uh, Swift Current Curling Club. Nice facility as well. And the players know it. Multiple high caliber events coming here every year. All right, no one able to make use of their, their guards here. We, we had that corner guard thrown. It was a bit light, and then we saw two more light guards. And I've and so I've been noticing this as I streamed all day yesterday. The ice seems a bit slanted. That's a figurative term, of course, not literally slanted, but throwing draws going away, especially mid-game and later, seem to seem to slow down. They surprise the thrower and the sleep sweepers and they end up light. Draws coming back towards the glass, however, opposite effect seems to glide a little further than they expect. You get a lot of uh, deep draws coming back towards the glass. So it is definitely a, a bit of a slanted effect on these sheets, and it's on every sheet, not just sheet four. Sheet five, six that I did yesterday, sheet two in the morning, exact same phenomenon. So curlers will have their eye on that. The team that comes out on top on Sunday is most often the team that makes the, the earliest and the most decisive adjustment to these ice tendencies, these conditions. So we'll see which teams are able to adjust and able to capitalize on the anomalies that they see on the ice. When you get into high-end curling, it becomes more than just pure execution. Observation, um, you know, adjustment tendencies managing your own habits the teams that refine this every game going forward just getting a little better a little better those are the teams that end up winning on sunday not that i would know i haven't made too many sundays in my current career but i'm streaming this is just what i've i've noticed that these are the teams that come out on top all right enough of my analysis let's update you on the end so we finally got some draws into the rings after some some light stuff, some guards, that intern side is looking totally choked off. No business over there. And uh, yeah, I was wondering if we'd see this. I think Team Silvernagle is going to have to start addressing guards here. So it's going to be Ashley Howard. With her first stone, getting rid of... Uh, Center guard looks like a straight peel call. This is floating a bit on her. Oh. Just barely kisses it. Doesn't really improve things all that much. In the overhead view, you can see we've got a Tisdale stone in the forefoot. A silver nagel stone, which would be a good position in the top eight, top four, but there's no way to access it. Tight guard on the outturn side. Now we've got a center line guard choking off the intern path if there ever was one. Now Team Tisdale is going to have a good opportunity to totally lock this situation away with another high guard on the outturn side. It's going to have to be some kind of double peel or run back from Team Silvernagle if they want an opportunity to score this end. Yep, just figuring out what kind of uh, big shot is going to be the most beneficial, and they're going to need one. So not a very easy double peel on those guards. In fact, I don't think there is a double peel. 
You have to get it quite thin. So it might be run back time for Team Silvernagel, but even that is risky. You might end up leaving some yellow in the rings if you bash anything back. So really sticky situation in the fifth end. Ashley's going to come down, give her two cents. Still lining up, run back. After run back, they know they don't really want to send a yellow guard into the, that fray. A lot of risk. It's just, it's getting to the point where I just don't know how they're going to get access to the fourth foot. I think it it might be another peel attempt. You got to just hope that that's a, Tisdale's going to miss their next guard. I feel like, like I like um, peeling the center line guard. Seeing if you if you can get it thin enough, maybe move that other yellow guard on on the other side. But the risk would be you, you would throw that corner corner yellow into the rings. Looks like they're going to try to make something happen with this long red guard on the four foot line. I think they're trying to bash red into red into yellow. Pretty risky. I mean, the natural thing that would happen here is you just rip out the red. Here they go. In turn run back. And it's way wide. Gets one. Gets a center line guard. Moves. Moves three rocks out of the guard zone. So that's that's a success. I mean, you're still you still got the center line pretty clogged up, but you got access now on both the outturn and in turn side. Outturn side still looking pretty ugly, but at least you have something. I think it's a good result. Um I can't hear exactly what the discussion was. I assume they were trying to run that directly into the rings, but th there's a chance that that was the call. What what just happened there was the call. Knowing that the multiple guards would leave the guard zone. Either way, looking much better than it was before. Discussion for Tisdale now, I'm thinking, is how to continue to protect their rock in the side of the forefoot. And of course, you could make an intern draw right now, try to occupy that top four area. You gotta think an out turn, sort of bang bang run back is, is coming if you do that. It's 
still re huge advantage Tisdale here because it, even if Silvernagle Team Silvernagle is going to run something in on the outturn side, they have to catch their own red perfectly, or else they're going to rip it off. They're going to rip it out themselves. So Silvernagle is going to have to be careful here. Team Silvernagle, that is Kelly Schaefer throwing the skip stones with how they approach. And, and you know what? We've got ice for an intern draw, and I like it. I think just a quick view of the overhead here. There's not a lot of risk. You're not going to leave any kind of double, and you might even get shot two here. So, blood in the water, sensing an opportunity. Team Tisdale already up a point. A force here would be good. I think a steal would be even better. They've got exactly that brewing here. So, Yana Tisdale's first stone here in the fifth end. Trying to stomp on the gas. Sweepers like it. Trying to get some late curl out of this one. Will they get second shot? Nope. Hangs a little high, but there's nothing wrong with that. In turn side, not available. No business. Though, they may have left it uh, open enough that there's a slash double. I don't know if that does too much for Team Silvernagle, though. That's a fine way to miss. You do not want to miss deep and give Silvernagle an opportunity to uh, get a shot. Frozen or on the button. Light was the way to miss there. It looks like they're still going to go with this outturn, though. I, I knew that they were lining it up. They seemed really focused on it after Ashley Howard's peel attempt, or run back attempt, I should say. Waiting for this thing to curl. Really need it to move. Yeah, that's going to blow right by. Couldn't get the line right. It seemed like good weight. Ended up going with a softer weight throw. Just try to make sure that they didn't punch their own stone too far out of the rings. And the price for that was you had to take a little more ice and have a little more line concerns. And yeah, she just got that one outside. Couldn't quite make it work. Really fantastic end. Fun end to watch. Good time to, to give a shout out to the, the organizations that make this all possible. Someone was mentioning how nice the Swift Current Curling Club looked, how good the ice was, and, and how much fun this was to watch. And it, none of this is possible, guys, without the support of, of title sponsors like the S3 group jumping in and, and putting their name out there. Really appreciate S3 Group supporting uh, this this high caliber curling tournament. I had never heard of S3 before. It's a industrial product development solutions kind of company involved in agriculture, um, you know, contracting, arena uh, operators. They, they have engineering divisions. They provide solutions to uh, to manufacturers, distributors even the retail industry. So if you're involved in ag or live events or, or uh, land management at all, give S3 Group, their, their website, a, a visit. All sorts of different, all sorts of different uh, manufacturing, production, branding, marketing, even media production. That UFO aeration commercial, that gets me every time. That's a hilarious production. But 
Guard comes a little deep for Tisdale. I think it still leaves the angles there to make that yellow, yellow, red run back work. Give you an overhead here. Would have loved to leave that guard a little bit higher. Make those angles tougher to manage now that there is going to still be that sort of outturn bang bang opportunity. Still very risky. There is a chance that this could uh, go very wrong for Team Silvernagle, but they're willing to take on that risk. It's the last rock of the fifth end. Kelly Schaefer trying to save the end with a score of one. Tough run back to make it work. A little more weight this time. Still waiting for this to curl. Looks closer though. get the top they get the second one and they do make the tap tap what a beautiful shot makes the angles work great sweep great call it's a single point kelly schaefer keeps her team in this game for the magnificent shot in the fifth it's going to be team tisdale with hammer tie game in the all-important sixth end when we come back Running the sanctuary absolutely brings me peace. The work is 100% cathartic for me. You know, I find myself getting tied up in it and being busy, and then it's really nice just to sit, breathe in life, and it's beyond zen. Here we go, sixth end. It's been a great game. Had a bit of a snoozer last night. Yeah, not every game can be super entertaining. This one has been. We've got a center guard. We've got to draw around. As I was mentioning, a bit of a slanted effect in the ice. Not, not a, a literal slant, but draws have been going a little further, coming back towards the glass, the home end stopping a little sooner on the on the way away so it looks like a good adjustment made keeping that rock where it needs to be Kara Theveno took a little bit of a tumble in the fourth end seems to have recovered ah we all fall while sweeping sometimes really good looking shot here Get a little bit of curl, a little tap. Beautiful. Can't ask for much better than that. I think. No, didn't quite get shot rock, but that's all right. That's going to take two stones to remove.
Trying to get the inside angle here. Kind of threw a ton of weight. Unlocks the stones. Nothing wrong with that. But two Tisdale stones behind the T-line. Two Silver Nagel stones on the center line as a guard. And on the center line top button, you got to think this is advantage Silver Nagel after lead stones have been thrown. Shaylin Kitts throwing second second rocks for Team Silvernagel. Gets caught on that heavy side. Rock just kept cruising. Kind of unfortunate she never touched anything. Would have been nice to get a chip on either the red or the, the yellow, but no, nope, puts it right through the uprights. Answering with second stones for Team Tisdale, Chantel Martin. Chantel and her sister Sherry curling with, with me and a lot of our fun spiels that we do throughout the year. Really fun girls from Ituna, Saskatchewan. Home of the Hog Wild, year end Von Spiel. Really fun stuff, Ituna. Great town. Great people. But as we discussed earlier, they do not teach you about the bus systems in Germany in Ituna. Perfect freeze right on the lid. Chantel putting together a really nice game this morning. Shot Rock still belonging to Team, team Silvernagel. So both teams, I love these types of ends down the middle where, where both teams are excited. They both think that they have an opportunity to make something happen. Team Silvernagel knows they have Shot Rock. It's, it's got some backing. So they know they have a, an opportunity to kind of draw play to the center and, and keep things tight, scoring area small. Whereas Team Tisdale knows that they have um, upper positioning on that stone in the forefoot. They know they have other stones in and around the scoring area. So so they, they know that the multiple score end is very possible this, this end. So both teams seeing opportunity in the same situation. That's where a lot of really fun curling comes from is both teams act confidently, aggressively, trying to make shots. Bit of a mistake there, left their stones grouped together. If there was a time to peel, you think it'd be right now. You could pretty easily lose both of those guards. Wonder if the one gets sent backwards into the rings, that'd be the only danger. You'd wanna make sure you get it thin enough to, to bounce off and kind of stay clear of your stones in the back. But I don't know if you can afford to be that picky. I think it's just time to make those things go away. Got to get access at that button set up at some point if your team Tisdale. So we call on right away. Chantel might be a little tight here. Like I said, you want to get this thin. Make sure you don't jam anything in the house. One, two. And it avoids the jam. Nice throw, nice sweep. Team Tisdale removes two stones out of the guard zone. Does get that right through the rings and boom, just like that, advantage Tisdale. In a bit of a guard for your life situation if you're Team Silvernagel, I mean, the other option is to uh, rearrange things in the button area. I don't think that's a good call though. Third end, or sorry, sixth end, even end. Only three ends to play. Analytically, very important to score in this end. So, yep, we're going to see a center guard replacement. Try to cling on to this shot rock as long as they possibly can. Team Silvernagel knows that in order to remove that red stone, you're likely going to lose at least a yellow, maybe two. So they have a little bit of insurance, but really they want to delay that that action, that, uh, that rearranging of the button. 
as long as they possibly can. So I think a center guard is the right move here. Forced uh, Team Tisdale to, to run things into the house, but Ashley Howard is going to skate down. They're going to have a look at things here. I'll stay quiet, see if we can't hear some of the discussion. I doubt it, but we'll see if we can. We have come to a decision. There's not a guard. Looks like they're playing a hit roll or perhaps even a double. That was thrown pretty far outside. Ashley is not going to get the roll she was looking for. And now without a center guard, it's going to be free reign. Team Tisdale to try and work their magic in the forefoot area. I wonder if there's a way to double off those reds. You'd have to hit it pretty thin, and I think your shooter would be drifting pretty far backwards, but I think I heard Yana signal a hit and roll to the wing. Jade Bloor, third rocks for Team Tisdale. Ah, really, really outside. That's going to be nowhere close. Definite mistake from Jade, but at the same time, Team Silvernagle so behind the eight ball this end, I don't even know if they, they know the obvious next call here. No one has touched this center line button area frozen scenario since it was created. Until now, Tisdale's making the move on Ashley Howard's second stone. They will bang out this, uh, this Silvernagle stone on the button. Time has come. One, two, avoids the jam in the back of the rings. And now it's Silvernagle with positioning on the top of the button, top of the, the forefoot. Not so obvious now how to score multiple points. Team Tisdale, three rocks to go. Wonder if they might try to rearrange that frozen scenario. Might just maybe a little tap on the outturn side. 
unlock the stones and and create an angle where the the silver nagel rock is not going to flow backwards you could hit and roll to the wing leave yourselves three stones in the rings with only one silver nagel stone opposing it if you ever got a roll out or something you could remove the silver nagel stone that way I think I would prefer outturn tap. Create some overlap, create a sort of angular scenario. It all depends if you think you're ever going to score your biter in the 12 foot. If you want to keep that one alive, you got to keep removing red stones for these, these next two shots. And that's what they'll do. Looks like a hit and roll out to the wing. Keep that biter in play. No guards in play, but it's still a chess match here as teams try to figure out what to do when. Really nice positioning. Jade's uh, second shot there. Missed her first one by a lot. Really dialed it in for her second rock. Was able to make a really nice hit and roll. There is no double, I don't think. On the inside two stones, you could, I guess, remove these other two. About a six foot double, just off nose. Kelly Schaefer's first stone. Looks like a double attempt. Gets one, gets two. Nicely done. Nicely done. Danger is dialed back a little bit. This end was looking quite scary for Team Silvernagel. They've gotten things to a more manageable state at this point. Not a lot of risk of giving up three at the moment. They're always going to have access to a Tisdale stone to remove. Unless we see a aggressive call, unless we see that outturn tap that I've been kind of dreaming about, hoping that someone throws Outturn tap I'm talking about is on that center line stone. Just throw back four-ish weight. Unlock the yellow. Create an angle on the reds. And actually, now where that, that red stone that was just thrown is lying, I think you would create a jam if you hit it just right. So even if you tap the center line red almost on the nose, just enough to unlock the two yellow, the yellow and red as they are right now, I think think you create a bit of a forced jam scenario where it's going to be tough to remove any yellows and I think we've got ice for that shot coming up so pretty specific you have to make it 
Make it just right in order to be effective. If you roll off either way, you're probably going to leave a double or at least access to one of your stones. But I think this is the, the best way to set up a potential three. Yana Tisdale's first stone in the sixth end. And I was wrong. They're playing a hit and roll, kind of double-ish shot. Don't know if I like it. There is a double opportunity now. Pretty easy one. You could also play a red yellow kind of run back shot. So they'll go for the double, they'll clear up the danger. I don't know. Didn't love that call. I am no genius. I'm no curling aficionado. Let me know in the chat what you thought about that play, what the danger was in, in my shot that I was describing. And yeah, let's have a little tactical discussion if, if anyone wants to chime in on the chat. If you liked that call, if you didn't like that call, if you thought there was opportunity earlier in the end, Tisdale had the clear advantage earlier on in the end, but through some rock-to-rock -rock trades, some decision-making, and some misses, but by both teams, both teams had misses during that exchange. It was a fun end to watch, fun strategical end and tactical end to analyze. Still got to make this not super easy. Supers are on it. Gets one, gets two, spills it. Oh, is it just far enough? Oh, is yellow still shot? Just overcurled on them. They're punched in view here. I think yellow is shot. If that's the case, you can just throw a draw, get your two that way. If red's shot, you still got to find a way to remove that and roll for two. Should be doable with soft weight. They think yellow shot. This is ice for a draw. I agree. I think it's yellow. So here it is. It is a shot for two after all that. We're going to get it. This time it's a draw. Got to avoid the rock in the front. And really there is no backing. You can't move that yellow very much at all. So this is a pretty specific draw for two points. Last rock. Yana Tisdale. Lots of communication. Got a curl is the call. It is curling. Will it settle down with no backing? Really well managed. Nice sweep. It is two points. If indeed those, yep, they're kicking them. They agree. Two points for Team Tisdale. Really well played end. Tisdale is, is playing well. I thought they may have squandered the opportunity but nope found a way two point lead it's going to be silver nagel with hammer in the seventh end two ends to play when we come back
Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Saskatchewan, you know SaskTel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With SaskTel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. SaskTel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Welcome back. Fantastic game we've had. Two-point lead for Team Tisdale, and it's well-earned. Fifth end, sixth end. They played extremely well. It was a massive shot Kelly Schaefer made in the fifth end to keep her team kind of in this one, staring down two points. Steal of two. They She makes a, a double tap. I guess she moved three stones to tap that red rock. So a triple tap right to the button with no backing. Made it work. Really impressive. So we've got a center ish guard. Followed by a corner guard. There we go. There's a there's a center line kind of dance. Not perfect shots from the lead here on Tisdale's team. Carla Anaka. Not very specific with her, her throws there. Leaves the stones kind of grouped just off center. Kara Thevenow is going to have an opportunity to come around her corner, but she's going to tick. Looks light. Don't think that was going to get there anyway. As I've said, folks, going away. The weight has been a challenge. It's been dying. The draws have been dying much quicker. Going away, gliding much longer. Coming home, I've seen that all weekend on all sheets, so... It's just the conditions of the ice this weekend. Not a bad thing, just a characteristic that the teams need to be aware of. Not adjusting too well so far, though, I would say. If I might say so. Lead rocks complete. We've got Chantel Martin. Looks like they're going to try to separate these centerline guards. That looks like ice for a tap. is way out there. We'll need this to curl. Looks like plan B is in motion. They're going to chip one of the guards to the center line. I'd say that looks pretty good. Not sure if that's exactly what the call was, but it's going to work out for him. just want to say hello to my 161 viewers. They're not mine. This game's 161 viewers. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Please do leave a little comment in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for, what you thought of this game so far. The beauty of watching on YouTube is we all get to talk together as a community. It's not like Sportsnet or TSN where we just tune in and zone out. This is an interactive media. This is user-generated media. New media. Welcome to the party. Free curling on YouTube. 
all weekend long, most weekends of the year. It's the future, people. Drink it in. Looking for a little chip. No, a little late on the sweep call to get the plan B. Going to be wide open on the outturn side. A lot of missed, uh, missed draws shots so far this end. Pretty messy. I would say Team Tisdale with the advantage. They've got the junk down the middle. They've got multiple center guards. It's going to be tough to remove all those things. Chantel Martin, big opportunity. Make a little hit and roll here. Occupy the center line behind cover. That's going to put Team Tisdale in a great position if she can make this. Uh, going to be outside again. Oh, another tumble. Going around today. The girls are tumbling. First Karathevno in the fourth end. Now it looks like Carla Anaka had a little tumble of her own. So Chantel wrecks on the outside corner guard. Not a great mistake. It's going to leave the door open for Silvernagle to plug another rock in the rings here. Maybe a little tap and roll is on deck. That seems like pretty tight ice. Line looks really good. Waiting for this to curl a little bit. Sweeping it now. I think they got a great shot here. Chip is made. Roll is made. I don't think there's a double. I think it's a little too close to the guard to allow the inside roll. Might be a hit and roll opportunity. I think they're hoping to catch a little bit more of the initial rock that they were trying to chip. I think that was a little light. A little more weight would have done them some good. But still, that was the call. It was made. Giving it a 4 out of 5. Ooh. Nah, 5 out of 5. I'm giving it a 5. Full points for that one. We will have a hit and roll. I don't think you have any other choice. Oops, sorry, I'm behind on my rocks here. There is four rocks down the ice for each team. Another mistake. Gonna chip that rock over. I think there's a bit of a straight spot there. Teams are getting caught. This rock's not curling. The ice is not very uh, big on that side, so not not an easy spot over there, I don't think. But either way, Jade's gonna be disappointed in that. Kind of chips a. Chips the Silvernagle stone into a really good spot for Team Silvernagle. Now, now it's trouble. This has went from advantage to disadvantage. Team Tisdale. Ashley Howard with an opportunity to really cement things in here. This looks heavy. It is. It's going to use the backing. Still a good looking scenario, but that rock coming heavy is, is going to give Team Tisdale one more chance to try and salvage this setup as it lies. If they can't make this, they're going to be playing some desperation runbacks pretty quick. So huge chance here for Jade Bloor to make it right. She's got to cement one in there. 
if they could get second shot out of this, that would be really, really huge. It's a straight turn. They're going to have to play it close to the guard. going to have to manage the weight really well. Tall order, but I think she can do it. Reigning Whitewood Farmer and Friends Monsfield champion, Jade Bluer. They're by the guard. Need this to slow down and get some late curl. Knock, knock. Okay. It's going to do some good. They would have liked their shooter to to stay more uh, more on top of things than that. But, you know, gets one redstone sort of out of the conversation. View count up to 174. Welcome all new viewers. This has been a fantastic game. It really has. I'm not just saying that um, to, to pump up the stream. It's been a really fun game back and forth. Super boring first two ends, wide open. So there you go. That's how you know I'm being authentic. But it's been a, a lot of back and forth, some made shots, lots of tactical decision making, really fun skipping game to watch transpire. Teams shifting gears, kind of regretting some calls you know some i wouldn't call it mistakes but definitely some some decisions that uh that resulted in swinging of momentum one way to the other ashley using that big howard voice to motivate her sweepers it worked sweepers just barely drag it there for third shot it's sitting right on top of the pile it's a perfect situation Nothing like a Howard yelling at you from behind to get those sweeping muscles going. That'll get some blood in the triceps. And it makes the rafters rattle. I've heard it happen. Two good shots from Ashley Howard is going to keep the stern advantage in uh, Silvernagel's hands. Silvernagel's favor. Team Silvernagel, sco uh, skipped by Kelly Schaefer. Personally, I still I still call it the, the team name of the skip. Just because you've got a sub and just because you've rearranged the lineup for one tournament doesn't make you an entirely different team. It's still Team Silvernagel. Ben Gamble won't throw a single rock for our team all year. We still have Gamble on the sheet. That might more so be because we we know who we know who the decision maker is on, on this team, but I digress. It is going to be desperation run back time. Things are looking pretty ugly in the forefoot, so got to do something. I thought there might be some sort of like hit, hit and roll, tap and roll on their own stone on the, on the side of the eight foot, but that side is just so straight. I don't think that they'll get the late finish that they'll need to hit and roll it. Really, they'd only get third shot anyway, so... You're going to throw a run back. I think it's it's right here on this first shot of Yana Tisdale's. You're going to have to catch it pretty thin. Really challenging look here. Big shot coming up here. I think she's trying to catch it thin and punch the Yellowstone that's just biting the 12 foot back into the pile. I don't even know if they're gonna get a good result out of this, but they have to try. Big sweep call. Gonna keep this straight. Gets one, gets two, sends it back, just blows by the pile. Very unfortunate. She thought she threw it good, but about halfway down the ice, both third and skip realized we got to go on this thing, and by then it was too late. So a little late on the sweep call. Might have kept it straight enough to make that shot work, but nope, punches it straight by. Not leaving a lot of good angles. I mean, let's say Silvernagel didn't even throw this rock. 
you'd still have a really tough time sending that center line guard back straight enough to keep it in the forefoot after you make the run back. There's just so many ways that it can uh, tick off of that top red and kind of cascade out the side of the rings. Got to remember, there is a count. There's a, a silver nickel stone in the back 12 foot, you know, four points or more is on the board. And you can see uh, Kelly Schaefer tapping her broom on that Tisdale stone. Hey, if we hit this, we're lying five. They are. They are going to hit this stone. Temptation is just too great. I think you can get a little roll inside as well. This is what I thought uh, Team Tisdale might do. Don't want to leave a hit and roll inside, though. Got to get some kind of roll here. They do. They do. That was close. If Kelly Schaefer rolls out away from the center line at all, Pretty juicy angle to hit and roll or make a double. So that was the risk with that call. You had to make a little roll inside. I think they did. I think that was a success. No clear way into this pile, and it is looking real ugly for Team Tisdale now. I don't see how you even get second shot here. They're looking at a tight hit and roll to get third shot hoping that there will be no shot available for three points. Just kind of hashing that out right now. How do we get as close to the top one as possible to get as much of a roll into the forefoot as possible? You can see Jade kind of signaling with her broom. That exact progression. Decision has been made. They are going to throw big weight to get as much of a roll as they can. This is do or die. This is the game in one shot. If you tick off that top one, you're going to leave an open hit for four. If you leave it on the nose, you're going to leave an open hit for five. Got to make this. Got to hit this and, and get a little roll inside. You'd think they might throw a little softer weight to create a little more curl, a little more angle, but... That spot has been so straight, we've seen, that you're not going to get that late finish. You're not going to get that sort of uh, sideways carving momentum to get a better roll. So looks like they've decided big weight is going to be the solution here. Looks close. Beautiful. What a shot. Yana Tisdale with the game in her hand. Makes it work. Not out of the woods yet. There might be an angle to punch that yellow out of there, but wow, that was, uh, that was a high-pressure situation. Yana Tisdale 
rips one down the ice. Hardly any sweeping necessary. Puts it right on the money. Up two points in the seventh end. Things were looking pretty bleak. Let's see some woot woots in the chat there. You know the curlers are checking this stream after their game or once the week's over reviewing the game. So let them know what you think of that shot from Yana Tisdale. This is always a tough emotion to deal with on the ice when you know you've built a huge end and shot after shot, you know that you've defended your chances of scoring multiple. Okay, we did our job. Okay, we did our job. All right, that shot was good. And then your opponent just makes a, a screamer, an incredible shot against you. And now you have to deal with the emotion of disappointment. You tried not to get too excited. You tried not to think, oh, we got this, this end in the bag. But you know in the back of your mind you did think that. You did think that you had something cooking, and now your opponent has spoiled your dreams. It's tough to stare at the house after that and think, oh, geez. Now it's our turn to make some kind of desperation shot. So they're thinking that they can make contact with this yellow in some way. I think it jams on the top red, but if you could ever just barely get by the yellow stone... I mean, your other option would be try to curl across the center line, run the yellow back into the red, into the yellow. That's a little dangerous, though. So it looks like they're going to go with this big weight hit. It's the last rock of the seventh end. Trying to get this to curl. Looks pretty outside. Red, red. It does move the yellow, but not quite enough. And after all that, it's a steal of one for Team Tisdale. Wow, Yana Tisdale, incredible shot. That's probably the most high-pressure shot I've seen all week. So it's a three-point lead. Team Silvernagle will have another opportunity to get themselves back in this game, maybe score three, maybe force an extra end. Who knows? We'll find out when we come back after this message from our generous sponsors that make all this live streaming possible. We're for agriculture, for growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrient Ag Solutions. Leading the field. Hi there, Jim Hale for S3 Air Systems. Today we're going to talk about their new product, UFO Aeration. Here you can see the completed durable powder coated steel frame construction and the large mega louvered design that allows four times more airflow than traditional steel louvered designs. Here I'm just bolting the uh, stage halves together. You can see how the components lock together with just a counterclockwise twist for different aeration needs where you can add and remove stages. Just remember that once there's grain in the bin, you can't change how many stages are in it. Please empty the bin before you change the number of stages. That's how Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference.
Welcome back. Incredible. Seventh end. Looked like Team Silvernagel was about to pop a big one. Blow this game open with a score of four, maybe even five. But a last shot. Desperate last shot attempt on a straight spot in the ice. A confident throw and make. Yana Tisdale put some steam on that one. Hit just about an inch inside of nose and and got a big roll into a really, really juicy spot. That was a fantastic shot. Yana Tisdale. So here we go. There's a, a rock in the corner, a, set, a corner guard, and now a rock in the forefoot. So that will be our lead stones once this silver nagle Karathevno corner guard is complete. Karis had a really consistent game and tournament. Blemish free virtually besides her sweeping spill, of course, in the fourth end. But that'll happen. So two corner guards. That will be the style of end we will have. Lead rocks are complete. Chantel Martin will look to, I think, plug another one in the top 12. Might be a tight center guard. Won't really matter. It'll it'll be hitting time after that. Five rock rule will be complete. Sass how be kind. Oh, that was not my second camera. We already saw that ad. Sorry about that. Looks like Chantel's going to toss that pretty heavy through the rings, in fact. And that's that slanted effect I've been talking about. The draws just do not want to stop when they're going closer to the glass. You'd think one of these teams would hire me as a coach at this point. I feel like they should uh, be cluing into that. Bit of a mistake for Chantel. Not a huge deal. It's still still uh, going to be Silvernagel dictating play with their two corner guards. Would have just made the eventual removal of the yellow stones in the forefoot a little tougher. Team Silvernagel going to ignore the Tisdale stones. Going to just place their own stone behind the corner guard. Sorry, a bit of a slow camera movement there, folks. Welcome to everyone who is joining from other games that have finished across the ice. It's been a fantastic game. Really incredible finish to the seventh end. In fact, if you have time, I would go and rewind the YouTube stream, go watch those last few shots from the seventh end. Nice chase, Chantel. Picks that stone out. They left just enough of it to be seen. Chantel throws a nice rock around the corner guard. Gets that stone gone. It'll be a replacement. Team Silvernagel needing three to tie. So if Team Tisdale just focuses on removing one red stone at a time, that should be enough. Silvernagel, of course, waiting for a mistake. This one looks a lot tighter to the guard than the previous stone. They take a lot of sweeping to get this one by. And they do. Sweepers get it by. As a result of that sweep, they take it a little further back into the 8-foot than, uh, than desired. The weight looked good. They just had to go pretty hard to, to get the, the line by the guard. Now, Jade Bluer, reigning Whitewood Farmer and Friends Bonspiel champion, will remove the more dangerous of the two guards.
peels the guard, rolls her shooter into sort of a problematic area, to be to be frank. You'd want to totally get rid of your shooter. Now there's two guards on that right wing side. An open rock on the left wing side. Bit of a mistake leaving the shooter around, I would say. So now we're going to see... Is this going to be a hit and roll? Obviously, the most important part would be keeping your shooter in play. Might just be a tap. Wonder if they think there's an opportunity to roll this shooter a little um, far side behind the guards, or whether they're satisfied with just kind of tapping on the nose this yellow stone in the forefoot. We're about to find out. Really trying to make this curl. And it is. They are getting some movement, but will it be enough? It will not. Bad mistake. He's going to group the red stones, leaving a double opportunity. Really huge chance here for Team Tisdale. If they can get both of these stones out of the rings, it will eliminate the chance of Team Silvernagle winning the game in this end, and it will mean that Silvernagle needs to score all three of their next stones. So massive opportunity. Here for Jade, reigning farmer and friends, Bonspiel champion. Not sure what happened there. They are sweeping the spot where Jade let that go. I wonder if that was a pick out of her hand because that missed by a mile. Got to be a pick. The reaction from the team indicates to me that was a pick. Well, huge turn of events. Double opportunity turns into a flash. So. It's going to be a chance for Team Silvernagle to put three in the house right now. Doesn't quite get tucked. Leaves it open for removal. They would have loved to have that stone totally buried. Because now, after uh, presumably after this double is made, you'll have to... like that's, that's in the way of your next draw path. So leaving that light and open was not really a great miss. Yen is going to try to double these off. Hopefully, or she's hoping that there will be a chance to remove one of the two red stones on the next shot. And she'll be right because with that stone being three quarters open, that intern draw path is just no longer, it's no longer there. You'll have to make a tap on your next one. And uh, one of those two stones will be available for removal. But that's all dependent on this double being made. Yana Tisdale coming off hot, coming off a big hit in the seventh end. That one was an out turn. Let's see if she can make this intern work for her. Looking for some curl. Only gets one. She is out counting that redstone on the top of the eight foot. Another reason why that first draw was a bit of a mistake. Ashley Howard just couldn't quite get it deep enough. Now, instead of ignoring this yellow stone, Team Silvernagle is going to have to address it at some point. Now, whether that's now or on their next shot is up to them. 
They could stack the rings, try to make a, a tap on the, the higher draw right now, leave an open rock for Tisdale to hit, and then if Tisdale leaves a double, that'll be their double for three to tie the game. The other option is to hit it now, roll open, knowing that they won't leave an easy double, leave a single rock for Tisdale to remove, and then try to hit their three that way. So there's two ways to score three. Just depends how you want to do it, what you want to leave for your opponent. I think... I think leaving that yellow rock alone for now is probably the... It's going to force the tougher shot for Team Tisdale, in my opinion. Ooh, good reminder. Just a little reminder for my fantasy football players. It is 10.52. If you've been distracted by this fantastic curling game, make sure to set your lineups. You only got eight minutes left. Your commentator is going to take a quick... 10 seconds to make sure that that's all sorted out. All right, back to curling. Looks like they are going to play a freeze? Or is this a tap kind of draw shot? We're about to find out. It's an intern. It is a freeze tap. Don't hate this. I, I just was wondering if it's going to leave a double. You're just putting a lot of onus on yourself. But hey, this is a, a good result if they can make it. Waiting for this to curl. Sweepers think it's a touch heavy. Line looks good. There's the tap. And see, that was the danger with that shot. That's a gimme double. I don't think that Kelly Schaefer needed to do that much. I, I really thought if you just roll, hit and rolled flat without leaving an easy double or made a tap on your, your redstone, tempted a, uh, a hit on the open one from, from Tisdale, you would have had a double on your last one. So now... It's going to be game over after this shot if made. Just making sure it doesn't jam. I don't think it does. I think it rolls pretty thick over the top. Even if it does touch the yellow, it doesn't really matter as long as the redstone is removed. I think this is a shot for the win for Yana Tisdale. Even if she only removes one, she'll be facing a tie. Really strong fight from Team Tisdale. Chantal Martin had a great game. Yana Tisdale made some incredible shots when it mattered. Dragged her team out of the fire there in the seventh end. That was looking real ugly. Really the shot of the game. Now, with this opportunity to effectively end the game with a double takeout, Yana Tisdale throwing her out-turn hit, a really solid fast slide that she has known on tour for being a, a really good hitter. Got the game in her hand. Yana Tisdale. Last rock in the eighth end without hammer. Sweepers on this right away. She curled over the top. They thought they had it missed. But her hard hit weight was able to clear that stone. Makes it work. And that's going to be handshakes. Really fun game. Any uh, young skip or, or junior coach looking to uh, give some scenarios, some tactical scenarios to show their, their team. This was a great game for that. Lots of tactical decision making. Some some consequences of those decisions washing out in the ends. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. 200 watchers with me now. The next game is at 12 o'clock noon. We'll see you then for semifinal action here in Swift Current. My name is Rory McCusker with Curling Stadium. The S3 Group SAS Tour Series here on uh, Curling Stadium Live. Take a drink, eat some breakfast, and we'll see you all at 12.
Thanks so much. Have a good one. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G, sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next curling stadium.